election of the second respondent was invalid by reason, by reason of corrupt practices or non-compliance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. The allegations are basically pre predicated upon electronic transmission of the election. A global reading of the Electoral Act 2002, particularly sections 47 to 61 to 5, 62 to 1, 65 to 1 to 8, will show that what the Act provides for is manual transfer and manual collation of results by collation officers at various physical collation centers. There is no provision for electronic transmission or IREF or electronic collation of results in the Act. By paragraphs 38 and 48A of INEC regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections 2022, the first respondent made provision for electronic transmission and physical stroke manual transfer of election results from the polling unit. However, paragraph 48C provides that if no result has been electronically transmitted from the polling unit, the provision of paragraph 93 shall be applied. Paragraph 92 categorically provides that at every level of collation, we are in a copy of collated results from the immediate lower level of collation exists. It shall be adopted for collation. By paragraph 93, where INEC add copy and electronically transmitted results from the immediate lower level of collation do not exist, the collation officials shall, shall use duplicate ad copies issued to the Nigerian police force and agents of political party to collect results. It is therefore not correct that it shall not be possible to collect results of the election where results have not been electronically transmitted. By law, the INEC regulations and guidelines for the conduct of elections 2022 is subordinate to the Electoral Act, where a provision of the guidelines continue, conflicts with the Act. The Act prevails. See Odene here against the Funuga, in yes, on, against Peter Sai, citation supplied, supplied section 134.2 of the Act. By section 134.2 of the Act, any circular press release, promise, or stated intention of INEC that is in conflict with or expand the provisions of the Electoral Act cannot prevail over the Act. INEC guidelines cannot be elevated above the provisions of the Electoral Act so as to elevate electronic transmission of results over and above manual and physical transmission of hard copies and manu manual collation of results as prescribed for, as provided for by the Act to the extent that non-compliance with the regulation automatically invalidates an election. PW4, the professor of mathematics presented to this court as an expert witness, confirmed under cross-examination that IREF is not a collation system. He also confirmed that whether or not transmission to IREF failed or the image of result on the IREF is blurred will not change the result entered onto form ECAT at the polling unit level. Under cross-examination, PW12 stated that petitioners had 133,000 agents. He was not a party agent at any of the INEX designated polling units or collation centers. None of the 133,000 party agents was called to testify that there was a dispute regarding any collated result at any polling unit, registration stroke ward, local government, state or national collation centers. So as to enable the collation officers at the various level of collation to activate the process prescribed under section 64, subsection six of the act. PW12 stated that the petitioners believed they have won the election. If they will have won the election, if the results had been uploaded, when asked about the score of the petitioners by which they claimed to have won the election, he answered rhetorically that how are they supposed to know the score when the result was still being uploaded on the IRA? So this petition is about the belief of the petitioners that they will have won the election if the results had been uploaded on the IRA. Election petition is a serious issue. A petitioner is not permitted to engage in fishing expedition 
or a roving inquiry, as the petitioner's hearing did. It is clear from the pleadings and the evidence of PW12 that the petitioners were from the onset engaged in a wild goose chase and inquisitorial adventure. By paragraph 9 of the regulation, a political party has a right to appoint one person as its polling agent for each polling unit, collation center, and one representative at each, poll, each point of distribution of electoral materials in the constituency where it is sponsoring candidates or candidates for an election. According to PW12, the petitioners exercise that right and add 133,000 party agents in the election. I stated earlier that none of those 133,000 polling agents was called, and not a single one of results forms collected by any of the agents was tendered in evidence. Electoral acts provided a candidate who wishes to challenge any results declared by INEC with a potent material, which are the forms on which results are entered signed by the first respondent officials and party agents, and a duplicate copy of it is we given to the party agent. Any serious candidate ought not to depend on, on INEC for materials to prosecute his petition. By Section 167D of the Evidence Act, the failure of the petitioners to produce election result forms could collected by their agent, raises a presumption that if those forms had been produced, it would have been unfavorable to the petitioners. The first respondent in their pleadings and evidence through DW1 stated that, delay, that the delay in uploading the results from the polling units to the IRF was due to a technical glitch which occurred on their transmission system, which was rectified within a few hours. All that the petitioners could do was to bring a PW1, a member of the second petitioner, who claimed to be a software engineer and an employee of Amazon. She had the tenerity and the audacity to claim authorship of a document, a word of which does not belong to her. The first respondent never claimed that the glitch occurred on Amazon Web Services. It is obvious from PW7's evidence that the petitioners did not understand the explanation of the first respondent or were just fixated on their belief that they won the election without any cogent and credible evidence. And they did not even bother to place any such ev credible evidence before this court. Were they expecting the court to go and gather evidence from the streets or from the markets, or to be persuaded or intimidated by threats on social media? That is not the way of the court. See the admonition of Toby JSC in Buari against Yara Dua on a similar situation like the instant case citation supplied.